live to the Extreme Movie Show. I'm your host, Rob, broadcasting to you, as always, from the Extreme Studios in the Pinos Palace, just west of Orlando, Florida, by a tiny dwarf lake on five acres of ex-citrus fields. Um, the Midwest beckons to me, and of course, that means RDV. RDV, it's good to see you again. Hey, how's it going? It's going. Uh, tonight's movie, Blind Fury, Rutger Hauer, 1990, technically, and it's one of the best blind swordsman movies of all time, and here on the Extreme Movie Show, we, we like to cover that sort of stuff, and... Rucker, who passed a few years ago, we did a little rip video on him, and we got to thinking about certain movies, and this just kind of came up on our list of, hey, you know, this is one of those ones that people don't seem to know about, talk about, it was was not a big film, but it's kind of fun, it's kind of wholesome, it's got that comedy kind of action to it that movies like True Lies and others would have in the 90s. It's a solid film, I think it's worth watching, it's not disgustingly violent, it's not particularly oh, it's... deep on any level, It's it's a decent watch. I didn't know what to expect. Am I going to go like you know, zany humor? But it actually was pretty good. And the description you put in the uh, below about the synopsis, I don't think, is that probably the best swordsman, blind swordsman movie I've seen. Uh, <laughs> American version. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's, that's kind of a joke, but yeah. Literally, the guy, he he's a Vietnam veteran. He got blinded by mortar fire. Uh, ends up uh, showing up at his uh, ex uh, or one of his former team uh, vets that he started with, you know, on his platoon squad uh, at the at his house. You know, wants to speak to him. The wife says like he's not here. You haven't seen him while after the divorce. He and like she's living there with, with his son with son Billy. And then while they're like they're you know they're talking stuff, uh, do uh, fake cop comes in. And they basically want to, like, you know, kidnap Billy because they want to force his dad to be uh, the, the Walter White and cook blue meth for them. Blue crystal meth. <laughs> crystal persuasion, as you say. It was, I was like, really? Yeah. This, it's not this, simple. Hey, this, this, guy's a, this guy's a chemist. Let's go bag him. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because uh, we had saw him previously before this scene. We saw him hanging off the roof in, in a, of a Los Vegas motel. Uh, we, also, we also learned out that his, uh, dad you know billy's dad is actually dating uh this girl who's kind of a ditzy but cute very cute uh played but lisa blunt is uh, i'm, I'm is, sorry what would the, what would the current ladies call it a uh bar girl or cigar girl or drink girl she's one of those cocktail waitress but but on instagram there are something something girls or whatever it's like the, the well, play thing. With, well, like, uh, whatever play but not really yeah. though she is a waitress and then she's kind of got that cute um Kind of like Annie Potts from uh, Ghostbusters, short mm -hmm. little haircut, you know. And she's she's kind of a, she's kind of a wimp, but she's kind of she's it's it's the way I best describe it. Her personality is kind of it's kind of ditzy, but also kind of like shy. Um, same person we saw Ma Michelle Pfeiffer play in Batman Returns before she went crazy. Was right. killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A meek, mild, no woman. Um, anyway. She yeah uh, she's in his movie too as well and she ends up like basically uh you know the boy basically because Rutger Howard takes out the bad guys you know with a sword he's got the cane he's got and he's got the little the hidden sword in it which is really cool I love that I'm I'm going back like this is like man like David Carradine had been on Kung Fu and made it as a comedy uh but uh but yeah so they and he basically takes Billy cross you know crosses you know straight on a bus you know. And they kind of bond along the way. It's kind of like Dutch. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's <laughs> the bonding is the '80s yeah. style, which means violence. Yeah, yes, yes. Shenanigans. Uh, and, you don't have that after the '80s. So they're on the bus, and you know they're you know he he basically didn't tell. He originally took Billy you know to the bus, you know, and Billy's like, "Well, I want to go talk to my mom." He's like, "Didn't tell us. He didn't tell his mom's dead." Uh, basically, so they were having fun, you know, yeah, on the, on this bus traveling. Then the rain, uh, they, they run into the general store, and then the rain starts kind of happening. He, uh, Rick Howard's because he's blind, he stumbles and falls in water, and like, and, and Billy is just basically laughing at him. And so then Billy, Billy then runs forward, lands on his knees, like, oh shit. <laughs> and he lands in the bug puddle, and Rick Howard just laughs at him. He's like, it's so funny. I hurt my knee. He's like, wow, you want me to call you an, an ambulance for you, little bitch? <laughs> I just love how he's like, he basically, he's like, you can stay here, or I can call an ambulance, but we got to go. The bus is going to get to leave. Like, you know, basically tell him to nut up, uh, which which is refreshing to see in a movie because nowadays we're like, oh, I'm sorry, Billy. Let me kiss your knee. You want me to carry you? No. He's like, get off your ass. 
quit whining, especially after you just, you know, made fun of me. He's not having it, and I love it. Um, so, but of course, they get back on the bus, they drive again, they and then they stop at another place. There's like, of course, it's in the middle of nowhere, with all the cornfields, a lot of hicks there. I was like, wow, what part of the country are they in? That's Kansas, sir. Oh How my dare God. you disgrace the great Midwest where you're <laughs> well, from? Well, they I'm not from Kansas. But you're from the Great Midwest. No, I'm from the Northwest. <laughs> mm. I'm not in the middle of the state. You are flyover uh, country, sir. <laughs> we we are uh, beer country of, of where I live. Because that's all there is to do is drink. <laughs> anyway, um, that's besides the point about my people in Canada. But anyway, um, so yeah, they end up like stopping there, and you got you know, like you, you see this everybody's at a truck, and it's in the middle of nowhere. And uh, and I've I've seen places like this before in Wisconsin too. As I get further south into Illinois, it's there's all this is farm farmland farmland, and then there's one store, a bar, or whatever, but it's like twenty miles, you know, from the nearest place. Anyway, so the so what happens is that the goons show up, uh, but only after Billy after his Billy is told by in his touching moment with they hear the music and they pan on zoom out they see Rutger Hauer. And to lean down one knee, can I love a Billy Tyler? Because basically, your mom's dead. <laughs> we yeah. can't call her on a payphone. Billy's like, you lied to me. He runs in the cornfield. And I'm thinking, like, oh shit. Like, you know, and then, like, you know, so then he runs into the field. And then we get this really creepy scene. If you take it out of context, it's Richter Hauer running with a sword, chasing Billy through a cornfield. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but of course, they know he uh, he realizes they're not alone. Billy gets grabbed by the goon from the, uh, the beginning, with the cigar, played by. Tex uh, Cobb. Text Man, little text cop people. <laughs> and I just want to take a moment here to, to interject here. Um, Terrence O'Quinn, a.k.a. would soon to be known as Terry O'Quinn, the guy from Lost and, of course, Jack Millennium. That's right. Or... Um, he's in here, and he does a good job because he has been in, like, a couple things before us, like a slasher film that we've talked about doing on here called The Stepfather. Uh, there's a lot of them like that. That he's... All, all these great character actors seem to have a slasher film, you know, whether it's um, you know, him or a couple other people, you know, Jack Frost is a movie we'll probably do at some point, but it's, he's a good actor. He's very solid. He's not just a supporting B level sort of dude. He's strong. Oh. And he's the chemist guy in here that I'm like, Terry, I'm used to seeing yeah. you like, kind of like a, was, a stoic badass here. You're a little bit the, of a punk bitch, the, but you're the most recent, the it. most recent I seen Terry O'Quinn, uh, it was in resident alien. He popped up as the alien hunter. Yes. Uh, those guys come up. I was like, oh my gosh, it's a guy from Lost. He's in Don some Juan. of the X Files episodes too, there, because yeah. there's kind of a crossover between that. But and it, it is different. Like I said, it is so weird seeing him with like color in it and actually having hair. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. It's because I'm so used to him when he made it fam- when he made it famous was Lost. Lost was his big star role that he's yeah. only popping up everywhere. But before that, I'm saying like, wow, he looks really, really young. And like, you know, it's like it's cool. It almost didn't recognize my first. Um, so I was like this going back to these movies. Now, this movie came out 1990, was on the edge of the 80s, you know, it was really 89 in Germany, you know, but uh, it kind of has the 80s feel, but also has that early 90s kind of like family wholesome thing, yeah. Uh, it's 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 right in that sweet spot, you know, before they all just started going into Mad Dog Times drama, weird stuff like this, you know, or or even overly loaded, um, cutesy kids uh, movies. This had violence, this, but also had a wholesome meaning. A whole, it was like a, it's a family movie with violence. It's not scary it. violence, though. No, 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 no. But I mean, it's like when he, when yeah, when he when cuts people, there's no blood. You don't see that stuff. We even get the, the RoboCop three fight at the end <laughs> with, well, the, the, with the Japanese well, swordsman. The, the lack of blood, kind of in this movie, is that yeah. it's it's a movie that's done well, but you can tell it's on a very small budget. But watching it, you really wouldn't know it because it doesn't seem like it's like a Jack Frost, you know, made for B or C no, level no. television or USA Network sort of uh, thing. It, it's it's solid, and the fact that it's the, the fact that when he takes uh, Billy to Reno to find his father, uh, we don't know what for or whatever. But he just wants to you know connect with his father. Um, I mean, that's it's really like a buddy cop, not cop, a buddy story kind of thing and traveling on, which we don't get many of these days. But there's something about Reno, even though Reno is where a lot of the action seems to be. I'm not sure if they actually filmed it there or not, but they, and they don't make Reno a character in and of itself. Like I've talked about some movies where you make the the place its own character, like in the equalizer three, for example, this movie just, it was, there was something cool about it being different that it was in Reno and not like Vegas or God forbid Utah or somewhere else. I also want to point out, I didn't realize this is the guy, Tim Matheson, the actor produced this was his first producing film. That's right. Man, Animal House and Boys of Johnny Johnny Quest. 
Johnny. Yeah, exactly. Johnny. So, Gross, yeah. so and I think, didn't, was, he, was he in here? One of the guys at the bar at the beginning? Or was that a big I guy? Don't know that that was him. I didn't really notice if, oh. if he was. In the, yeah, because in the very beginning, there is these, oh, the guy gives him the hot sauce. No, I don't think that's him. Oh, I got, I thought, okay, I thought maybe it was him, but uh, yeah, I was like, I'm watching this movie. I'm like, you know, the, the very beginning, and like you see, like he's in Vietnam, you know, and and then he's like, oh, he's blinded, so and then the next thing you know, you see him like he's 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 he's, he's rescued by these people. There's this small village, you know, take him in. They're laughing at him, but he's, they're trying to train him on the sword. He it, they don't speak a word of English, so I don't know how they ever, but somehow he learned from them how to be daredevil <laughs> without the radar sense but uh or using his ears and stuff they taught him they trained him and they actually know 20 years later in, in florida <laughs> from vietnam that's right uh, it, this has florida man written all over it because it is it, it, it starts usually the, the montage in, in a show was going into act three right especially like the a team and a lot of movies you get your big gear up sort of thing whether or not it had music or not or, or a, a song and then you'd go have all your ultra violence and then roll credits so, this one so, they start out with it, and I liked how they did that because that's actually authentic Vietnamese. I'm not sure where they shot it, but uh, yeah. that's a certain kind of fruit. I forget the name of it that he's trying to learn how to chop and all that. So I liked how we start off immediately in a training montage. <laughs> that was kind of yeah. cute. I kept thinking like, oh, this could have went like so like over the top, like VFW. Remember that Stephen Lange? Yep. Like you could you could have had Gore. We were like, oh, because because there was the scene. He did chop a guy's head off. You did see that there's there's there is some some gore in there, but not really. There's not blood spurting, but it could have. So I think the movie would have made more money if there would have been a little more. If they would have added the blood in it, more blood. Basically, put blood back into the movie. You know, uh, I want spraying and then like because because honestly because this kind of felt like what are you trying to be? You're trying to be Disney. It does feel that way, but one of the things, like because it came out in early '90, that is interesting. You made the comment a little earlier about it's this. It's like an '80s film with with the early '90s kind of vibe to it. Yeah, that was kind of something that was missing in the '90s. Is what are we doing for hardcore violence? And it's not really there, like you think it is. And so it's it's not brutal like it was in the early to mid '80s, and it wasn't the over top, you know. Mm -hmm goofy comic book stuff that you know chuck norris and schwarzenegger and everybody got into um it's different and so i agree with you in that if they wanted to make it a serious film they could have but they chose to go a more wholesome way which i don't mind but it's i i, I don't know what the thought process was behind it because you're absolutely right you clearly see that okay would it would have been no problem to do this you know the japanese style where they go over the top where you know when he like he gets the guy in the cornfield <laughs> yeah. and, and all that you don't really see anything you just he does the, the blade behind uh -huh. the back sort of thing you're like they could have you know put a spray hose in that just went over the top but it's not that kind of film he killed popcorn popcorn was a nice guy <laughs> he had a lot of big old big popcorn that's what he's call him popcorn like like there is some really funny scenes in here is the car chase and he's driving the van. He's that guy. The guy in the car is like, "What are you? What are you blind?" He's like, "Yeah, what's your excuse?" So he's, he's driving down. Billy's because they took turns. Because originally they're being kidnapped in the van. And these two goons knocked them knocked them out over at a at, at, um, Frank's base apartment. You know his dad. You know Billy's dad's apartments. Took and it took his dad's girlfriend and three of them all hostage. She's sitting up in the van with them. The one dude's trying to flirt with her. You know they're all idiots. He's like, "Oh, he popped up in the store, cuts him." He's like, "Suck my thumb, baby." Meanwhile, uh, it was really cool to see in the back with you know, um, Rutger Hauer and Billy. And Rutger, remember they have the zip ties kind of back. He's like, I need you to go basically like a frog, a leap frog, and pull your, you know, pull your legs out. And then he's like, get my lighter. He's like, what? He's like, hold it still. And next thing you know, she's watching him in the back because she's facing, facing, her, facing towards the, the back yeah. of the van. Yeah. And so it was really great. Uh, and then you see, I see there's smoke coming out of the van. They stop. I just love this. And then, so basically, they're able to, like, he, they knock, knock the guys out, steal their van, and then they're like, oh, who's going to drive? And they're like, oh, crap. And then she's like, I'll drive. But then they go back for his sword with the guy the guy chucked out the window, grab that, they're shot at. And they're like, who's going to drive? It's like, you know, because he stepped on her glasses. He's just, I can't see. It's like, well, it's a good thing, you know, I, I can drive. I'm blind. I can drive. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it is my turn, and then he has Billy you know, basically look for him. And I just kind of like that. It really forces the fact that those two were actually got a, a nice bond. And it's believable towards the end when everything's all safe and sound. You know, Billy's going to leave with his dad and, his, and 
with his his girl and his dad's girlfriend go to San Francisco, and you see basically um, Ruka Howard's character. He's like doesn't want to go. He's gonna leave, and you see Billy runs out, and he's like, "Oh, I I need, I need you." He's like, and he basically kind of like sets him straight. He's like, "You know, no, you don't, you don't need me. You have your dad." So, and he's kind of like doing the whole uh, kung fu. He's gonna wander somewhere else to help out. Like, why wasn't there a blind fairy like TV show? That would have been awesome. Was there? There was a show in 1984 called The Master, starring the greatest ninja of all time, Shoko Sugi, and Lee Van Cleef as a ninja master, teaching one of the friggin' Van Patten Brat Pack kids uh, while they were traveling around in a van and a gerbil. Was he blind? No. Oh. See. But that, to me, is kind of, uh, you know, other than that, that's exactly what it was, because he teaches him teaches ninja philosophies and all that as he goes and looks for his daughter while the evil ninja clan goes to kill him because, you know, he's an American who learned it and came across the States, and, you know, he's not supposed to teach people that aren't his or something. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Not a lie. I'm just saying, if this movie would have been made in the <laughs> 80s, they literally could they could have done a whole Blind Fairies TV series in the 80s. That would have been great. Uh, it's there. You could still do it. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, it's with the budget. Remake, remaking some a- movies isn't enough. You could take something and make it a series, and this is a perfect one because you're right. That, that whole structure we've talked about—the Wandering Man type thing, where there's Incredible Hulk, uh, Prisoner. Yeah. You can't really say that, but um, well, Prisoner is uh, all on an island. Yeah, he's on. A yeah, TV, but it's it's leave. it's just you have a different thing happening each week. You could do that, and you know that would be kind of fun. That's but, well, that's what drew me to the Bill Bixby series, Incredible Hulk, because he was traveling. Yeah. Every time, it was, and it, it was it wasn't like cold check. <laughs> there actually was continuity a little bit in there. You had mm-hmm. a guy pursuing him, you know, a uh, guy played Jack McGee. Fun series, check that out. Would love to reveal that sometime. Uh, but yeah, definitely the whole wandering man helping out, then traveling. That was kung fu. That's and that David Carradine yeah. and have a oh uh, have gun will travel. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there was a lot of stuff like that, westerns like that. A guy would just run into town and leave and help out. Uh, we, you know, like I said, that plot, that storyline, it was a trope, works. The fact that most people, not a lot of people, don't do that anymore is kind of mind boggling. But then again, I realized that a lot of them do, the people in current writing stuff, are not the same people who are writing back then. And if they are, their political views have changed and everything is to the point where they don't want to. They'd rather virtue signal than actually put out something quality. Like I said, this is better than most of the movies I've seen today. It's straight to the point. It's wholesome. You know what you're getting. Now, it's Rutger Hauer in like a straight-to-DVD movie. And I got to say, I like the – when it comes to straight-to-DVD movies, there's nothing wrong with them. I watched, yep. a, lo- I watched a lot of them with um, Dolph Lundgren. Those are great, too. Oh, God, yeah. And, and you know, Dolph would be the first one to tell you that, hey, people pay me to, to do this, and that's it. So yeah. why why do I want to, you know, try but, my range as an actor? This keeps me healthy and employed. And I enjoy doing the movies, and that's fun. So more power to you. Same thing with guess, DVD. But like I said, like the very end, like scene, it's like, oh, this is like shooter and like Rebel Cop three, all combined, and like you know, uh, Ninja all wrapped together. Like they're in like this lodge, ski lodge under the resort, and there's a jacuzzi in there, and they got a Japanese Japanese samurai. Or uh, basically, or a hitman who's gonna basically uh, fight against uh, Richter Howard, you know? And it's just like, wow! It's just like it's just like it's just insane plot towards the end. And like you know, he kills the guy by you know, the guy's gonna sw- he's gonna swing on the because people on the when they're in the it's like a spa thing. Mm-hmm. Do you remember for re- rehab? You have those uh, what you call it? things that put the bar to pull you up out of the water to mm-hmm. help you if you're, yep. if you're handicapped. Yep. The guy's like the guy goes to swing on that, and then because because the the jacuzzi is all spread, like it's, it's short circuiting, guy falls in there, gets electrocuted. Rutger Hauer then gets shot by Tex. Yeah, Cobbs, you know he just comes out of nowhere. He's like, I "Told you, you're a butter knife ain't gonna do shit about a sword." So, and then they, so, <laughs> then I laugh. He like grabs the samurai sword because his sword got fell in the water because the kid threw it. And he missed it. He's like, "Oh shit." And so, he, and then he's like, he throws the sword and it pins with the wall. But then you see like Cobb's like this pull, you know, he pulls the sword out and he's got, he's crawling across, he's going to reach for the gun. But of course, you know, he ends up getting it uh, cut and then falls out the window. And this classic uh, green screen death. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know. Hey, if you're up high, you know, what goes up must come down. I, I said, I was like, because we saw him like get, almost get, 
he tried to kill him three different times in the world of the movie. The first time was with Cigar. He kind of not, he kind of he just he didn't kill him. He was trying to kill him. Second time in the cornfield, he cut him, but the guy was wearing a Kevlar vest. Yes. So it blocked the, the blade. They kept Tex Cobb around for the whole movie. Yeah, I was like, he just kept coming around. I just kept thinking of this guy with this. Like, you could have basically could have put the big boss man from WF in there. That was yeah. the type of role he played. Yeah. You know? Tex but, Cobb, you know, it, was, it seems it was always kind of considered like a, a second level goof in, in his A's movies, just another big thug. But yeah. he's got he's got legit background. And even though he may not have been in a lot of movies that people have seen or even know who I'm t- we're talking about, you'd recognize him like in the. Uh, Ace Ventura, I believe he's the he's the guy at the beginning. He steals the Shih Tzu from, and and uh, he's been in some other things too. But he he was an athlete. He was a name, and in the eighties was dominated <laughs> by people that were at least bodybuilders, powerlifters. Uh, a lot of people that Schwarzenegger worked with um, were people that he, were powerlifters that he knew. Especially like in Conan, you look at him. Franco Colombo's the little war scout at the beginning. I say little because oh. relative to everybody else, he's small. So it's it's not a surprise to see that. But again. Once you get past yeah. this movie into the '90s, you don't see a lot of big jacked people in movies. And I should apologize. The the the, the Japanese fighter at the end fighting against him, the sword is actually Sho, Sho Kusagi. That's right. But, but the, man, uh, uh, yeah. the, the best ninja of all time. Oh, and so it's like it was cool. It's like you know, I was missing Chuck Norris to pop up on it somewhere. Everybody just be like, <laughs> fight scene. Uh, yeah, Rick. I don't really watch a lot of Rick Hard movies, but I probably should start. I mean. We've talked about. I don't think we ever reviewed the Hitcher. No, I, I thought we, we did, I, but I, mean, I think Hitcher we might have. Solid. Yeah, the Hitcher was really like intense. So it was like, I don't, I don't. I mean, what else was he in too? As Richter Howard, as far as well, everyone will say Blade Runner for his first thing. Blade Runner's that. Yeah, we haven't reviewed that, but I'm trying to think of his big roles in the in the eighties. But uh, it was but, in uh, um, the uh, black and white cartoonish movie from what 2005. Robert Rodriguez or whoever, that one. You know who I'm talking about. It's got uh, Powers Booth in it. It's uh, was it Rodriguez's film? You know, I know what I'm, talk- you know well, what I'm talking he's about. He's, he's in Buffy, Buffy Vampire Slayer, Omega yep. Doom. The last thing I saw him in was a couple years before he passed. Um, he was in an anthology series, I think in the third season, Butcher's Block of Channel Zero, it's called, where they took some creepy pastas from online and made them into stories. And that one was kind of weird. Um, it wasn't straight up serial killer weird. It was just something. But he definitely was in that. And he's Dutch, so you know he ages well. And he's, he's a bit bigger than what you'd think, at least as far as his height. So he's one of those <laughs> actors that doesn't seem to have really changed that much yeah. as he gets older. You just go, oh, that's him, but he's just older. And so he does have that same kind of, not calming presence, yeah. Uh, but he has a certain, he has a charisma, but it's different. Like, he yeah. seems very affectionate with the boy in here. He doesn't seem like, I'm going to kick everybody's ass and fuck you little kid for tagging along with me. It's not like that. He seems he's got genuine affection. You're like, okay, this is a little different. It's no top dog, but then it's not Chuck Norris either. Yeah, he was just, I guess he was just in The Last Kingdom. He was in that. But uh, what we should watch next is Split Second. Oh, Hubble with a shotgun stuck saying in chat. That's right. I, we've talked about that one, yeah, yeah. too. Yeah, um, no, I want to watch that soon. I want to watch that uh, review that next. But I mean, also, uh, Split Second looks pretty cool. That's from 1992. It's, uh, it's a science fiction Nighthawks. movie. Well, yeah, that's right. We did review Nighthawks. Yeah, he was the bad guy in there. Yeah. 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 yeah so the so, thing here with this film is, as I agree with you, it's a small film. Um, it, a lot of people liked it and enjoyed it. But it's interesting because, again, around 1990, films started changing in terms of what they were looking for. They became more of a a bigger action type thing like your cliffhangers and all, all the 80s action stars became more adventure type ones and you saw a bigger budget movies true lies um all those types of movies that arnold did and well, uh, even Bob 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 yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Be, they became not temple franchises per se <laughs> like like time cuff's not a martial arts movie you know, well, arnold, you know that. arnold had his own specific things it's commando yes it's he did they're always big explosions yeah yeah you know, so eraser was another one oh yeah you did too like you know and then like even even the weird stuff like six day you know, and like, even that yeah. style in the 90s you thought okay i get that they're older if this is the type of movie that they're doing it's more of a popcorn theater thing rather than a manly kick-ass thing that's fine um you know you thought some other people might have picked it up in the 90s but they didn't 
Um, and you mentioned the B-level and DVD type of events that were going on in the 90s, which has a lot of merit to it. But even by the late 90s, once Marvel started to take off with Blade and all that, we started to see totally different kind of films. So it's right when you point out that this is kind of a goofy comedy film. It's like yeah. a lighthearted take on the Blind Swordsman, the serious Japanese yeah. films. But again, we've talked about before, sometimes when you're watching a movie, you don't realize, hey, this is one of the last few movies like this type that you would see mm -hmm. for quite some time because we don't really have anything like that here. Um, we might have a few things that, you know, from on Netflix or something, if you're looking around, trying really, really hard to find it. But um, no, this this movie's yeah. a bit wholesome. It's decent. It's, it's clean cut. Anybody could watch it. Um, my wife was, you know, doing some work on, on the couch while I had it on or whatever like that. She even stopped a few times to laugh because some of it was kind of nice and wholesome. And so it's, it's not one of those gory things that a girlfriend or, or a woman wouldn't be offended by, you know. It was That's weird. That kind of movie. It was kind of like Adventures of Babysitting. In the sense, the, the whole uh, the chase scene, the two goons, even when he when he when uh, he goes into the uh, casino and you see Rutger Hauer starts like uh, he realizes the guy's cheating people. Yep. He, he cuts the, the thing off and then he gets it's a whole broad casino. The two goons that were chasing before, now when they're like, oh, cool fight. And they're just like they're they're basically, they're basically like um, Jay and Silent Bob in a sense. They just happily come in and they start fighting. Def definitely a comedy film uh, with a whole with some wholesomeness to it and uh some action. Not a lot of martial arts. Uh no. more, more swords play. And it's, and it's not about the martial arts of the sword or anything like that at all, or this clan versus that, or this style versus that. It's not that kind of movie. It's not really a martial arts movie. It's 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 a buddy, you know. I don't even want to say coming of age story, but it's it's a wholesome family movie, just gussied up mm -hmm. with a, a father type figure, right? What did you think of the right. mom getting whacked at the beginning? Meg Foster getting whacked in the beginning, and then no blood, shotgun to the stomach. No blood, baby style, baby. <laughs> I, I, I was just like, this is like, even seventies movies had more blood than this. I'm thinking, oh, yeah. Dawn, Dawn of the Dead had more blood than this. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. like, like I mean, she's like, she's, she's, I'm like, and after he takes out the goon, and, and you know, and she's like, uh, what's it? No, are you, are you still, are you still alive? In, in, in Destevro or whatever? And she's like, uh, take care of Billy. It's like what? <laughs> it's like, it's like. And then she says it three times. And he's like, and he finally is like, "Sure, I'll take care of Billy." It's like, wow, they really prolonged that death. You know, uh, she should have been like, she should have like had blood come out of her mouth and everything because she got shot in the side, technically on the side. So organ failure. So she's but, got those it, albino eyes too. So you're like, oh yeah, I remember her from They Live, and she gets whacked just like that. Every movie she, I remember for every movie she's in, she's hot. <laughs> she's, and she's got uh, the husky voice too. Oh my gosh, sultry. <laughs> uh yeah i was kind of disappointed because i was like and then they, they don't even really credit her you look at the um like you look at the type of in like i think it was imdb or something or or, or not or just type in the movie itself looking it up like they don't even list her in the so i had to go go through and i was like okay where is she in this and like oh there she finally is because she wasn't a big character in the movie but like everybody knows years later, it's like they need to update that because I feel like when the movies come out and you have no name stars, but once like 20 years later, once if these stars do become famous, they should be really, uh, you know, credited at least higher up. And I don't know if that has to, if to do with rights or uh, because, you know, contracts, the movie. But I feel like once the movie has been like 20 years old, I mean, they might get royalties from there, but I don't think they, I don't think the actors have the, uh, a say in having their name being at the top, you know, in, in the cast by themselves or something like that. I think you that contract surprised. It, I, you would think they'd be expired, but I want to say I'm just going to say this for those who are like us movie channels, you should list Meg, Meg Foster in this movie as a title role. <laughs> no, should. those things, those things are contractual, and yeah, there's a lot of stuff behind it, and it always changes every year. So the contract status 30, 40 years ago in Hollywood well, a bit different. People buy now. movies it changes for few years. It, it, has, it has to change because when other companies buy the, the distribution rights, it, yep. it has to change. That's why if you like me were trying to watch uh, Mommy Vice on Tubi, you've got all the friggin' episodes. But if well, I should say like you, but like me, I'm trying to watch DJ Hooker and I'm halfway through season two again and they <laughs> took out like twenty of the twenty four episodes because of all these stupid rights thing. And that's what you always like to say to everybody, get a physical yeah. copy of it, get a backup because you know, you own the rights to see something on a platform, but whether you see it on your Xbox, PlayStation, however Sony you Sony did Amazon, this. Those Sony did it recently, absolutely. Yeah. And Tubi 
I don't know the background behind it, but we like it as a resource. That's why we like to post where we're watching it sometimes is, is a gold mine. And you get to see these films in a great print. They're typically the best one that's available, unedited. Yes, you have a few small commercials with it. But yeah, it's nice to go, okay, let me look for Blind Fury. Bam, it's on Tubi. All right, we're going to watch and talk about it on Tuesday. So I'm good always stuff. Bu- I'm always buying, you know, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, any other final thoughts? Yeah. Anything you need to uh, plug for tonight? Uh. If you guys haven't watched this, check it out. It's free. Everything we've been reviewing lately has been has been uh, available. Like uh, 2B TV is a really great source. Um, that's what we use to uh, view a lot of stuff lately. And uh, Miami Vice, the movie was on there too. Plus Miami Vice TV series. You just have TJ Hooker. This is on Tubi, so it's free to watch with ads. If you have an ad blocker on your PC, you can skip all the ads. It's great. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm watching. Uh, you know Miami Vice with no ads. It's so great, <laughs> and it looks great. It like and it, it just it goes like it, uh, literally. Ed Blacker is like, oh, we're gonna go on commercial, and nope, we're gonna go right to the next scene. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's so smooth. But anyway, um, in uh, about twenty minutes, I will be going live on a over on the Kiki Puppet Show. I'll be out with my friend Zach, and we'll be talking about the new comic books coming out this week. So if you're a fan of comic books, check out the Kiki Puppet Show. Go subscribe now. Uh, if you're not subscribed here, you should be. Uh, help us get to a thousand, man. We're like four. If you know like four people or five people, let them know. Like, dude, dude just subscribe. I don't care if they watch it. Just let us get the subscribers, and then we can worry about the watch time, and then we'll be like bit monetized. Uh, we we do, we're trying to reignite a fire into this channel. So you've noticed some of the playlists, some things been changing around here. Let us know uh, in the comment section of each live stream we do. You know. Do you agree with us? Our takes? We want to know because we love movies and we just want to talk more about them. See TV shows. We may not have the uh, always the same opinions as others, so I like hearing other people's opinions because at the end of the day, there's no there's no wrong or right opinion. It's just whether you like the movie or not. You know, I can't. It's uh, and I, I, I like I said I love seeing Pixels when he's on here. Rob has always got his, his specific view and. Rob surprised me sometimes. I'm like, I'm thinking he's not gonna like this, and then he was like, then he's like, oh my gosh, vice versa. So, uh, Stug, thank you for for subscribing and uh, popping up and watching us and us in here. We always appreciate people, man. We don't, we don't do the we don't do the black pill, red pill, but we don't do any no, of that kind of no. stuff here. We talk about it. I give it context from the '80s because I grew up there. You give it context from the '90s because you grew up then, and Pixel give it context from. This is the something the late 2000s yeah so we have three yeah. different generations representing movies here on the extreme movie show yeah yep yep so that's it hope you guys had fun and we'll see you for the next one uh we'll see you like on sunday uh i think we're doing die hard on sunday i think so do you remember i don't know yeah. we'll find out we'll schedule <laughs> it <laughs> yeah, there you go but, guys um Blind Free Rucker Hour, check it out. It's a really good one, too. And we'll obviously take requests if you guys have some for some movies. I know Hobo was mentioned. All right, guys, have a good night. Thanks for watching. Listen, as always, stay extreme. Good night now. Get later. <laughs>